welcome students for the physical chemistry lecture of paper number 5 semester 3 and you know we have started with the second unit and the name of second unit or topic it is the physical properties of liquids and in this chapter you have learned the difference between physical properties and chemical properties and what are the different physical properties and again you have studied the surface tension it is one of the physical property and the determination of surface tension by stellagmometer method and the capillary rise method you have already studied it and all of you know the surface tension it is a physical property it arises due to unbalanced forces at the surface of the liquid then the second physical property that you have studied and that is the viscosity and determination of viscosity by ostwald viscometer and uh, you know the viscosity property it is related with the flow of liquid that means the liquids that are flowing readily on plain surface such liquids are called as mobile liquids and the liquids which flows slowly on the plain surface such liquids are called as viscous liquids and you have determined the viscosity with the help of ostwald's viscometer and for the uh, last lecture you have studied the determination of coefficient of viscosity by the ostwald's viscometer and the next physical property that today you are going to study and uh, name of that property it is the refractive index and all of you know that refractive index it is the property related with the liquids and it is a well known fact that when light passes from one medium to the another medium then that suffers a change of direction and this change of direction of the light ray it is called as refraction of the light and it is first studied by the scientist snells here you are very well familiar with this diagram here you have a one glass in this glass there is a water and in this glass we have dipped a straw and when you carefully observe this diagram here though this straw is intact one it shows bented here that means this is the property of refraction of light ray or the change of direction of the light ray again here refraction in this example a straw in a glass of water makes a good example of a refraction here the illusion is caused by a refracted light rays when they cross from water back into air before reaching our eyes this is a very good example then in the another example here there is a wooden stick it is dipped in this big uh, big water container and here also this stick it seems it is a bented 
though it is not bent here a refraction means the light bends or changes direction at the boundary of the two media here above this water there is a air medium and below this here it is a water medium and though this peak is a intact one we shows or we seems that this stick is bent here and it is due to the light bends or changes direction at the boundary of two media and this phenomenon it is the refraction of light here in this optical diagram here it is shown this is a first medium and here it is a second medium the first medium it is a rare medium or air medium and here the second medium it is a dense medium or suppose here it is a glass this is a normal and this is the incidence ray here this is a incidence ray it incident at this point o and the angle made by incident ray with the normal it is the angle of incidence this is the angle of incidence and when the ray of light it passes from one medium to another medium here it gets refracted that means bented instead of uh, going in a straight way here it is either refracted towards the normal or away from the normal depending on the nature of the first medium and second medium here the beam in the first medium is called a incident ray and the incident ray hits the boundary at an angle of incidence the beam in the second medium is called a refracted ray the refracted ray leaves at an angle of refraction here this is the angle of refraction that means angle made by refracted ray with the normal it is denoted by letter r and angle of incidence it is the angle made by incident ray with the normal and it is denoted by letter i then note that very important thing when light moves from air to water it bends towards the normal when light moves from air to water that means rare medium to dense medium the light bends towards the normal making the angle of incidence greater than the angle of refraction and when the medium is changed that means when light passes from dense medium to air medium then the light ray it bends away from the normal making the angle of refraction greater than the angle of incidence here the angle of refraction light bending toward the normal indicates that the speed of light is slower and light bending away from the normal indicates that the speed of light is faster and the changing speed is what causes the change in direction here the changing speed of the ray of light it causes the change in direction when light strikes a surface along the perpendicular the angle of incidence is zero i repeat once again when light strikes the surface along the perpendicular the angle of incidence is zero and 
the angle of refraction is also zero. Then we will see in a detail what is the Snell's law. Here the Snell's law describes the relationship between angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. Remember the Snell's law it describes the relationship between angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. The degree to which light is bent depends on the medium and density of the medium and the Snell's law states that the ratio of the sine of angle of incidence, the ratio of sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction and this ratio it is always constant and that value we call as a refractive index of first medium with respect to another. For light going from a vacuum into another medium the constant that means refractive index it is represented by small letter n is called the index of refraction or simply refractive index. Here I will repeat for the light going from vacuum into another medium the constant that means refractive index denoted by letter n is called as the index of refraction or simply refractive index of the medium. Then the equation of Snell's law as already you know that the ratio of angle of incidence to the angle of refraction this ratio it is always constant and this gives the refractive index or index of refraction and uh, mathematically it is written as n that means index of refraction or refractive index it is equal to sine of angle suppose that angle is theta angle of incidence and divided by sine of angle theta and this theta it is of refraction here this ratio sine of angle incidence divided by sine of angle refraction it gives the value of a refractive index or index of refraction and here theta i it is the angle of incidence and theta r it is the angle of refraction this is the representation of snell's law with the help of equation then the snell's law it is also written as here n i into sine theta i it is equal to n r into sine theta r where n i is the index of refraction of the medium in which the incident ray travels and n r is the angle index of refraction of the medium in which the refractive ray travels that means here n i into sin i it is the refractive index of medium in which incidence incident ray travels and here refractive index of the second medium in which refracted ray travels this is the snell's law we can represent in this way also n i into sin theta i it is equal to n r into sin theta r here remember this n stands for refractive index r stands for refraction ray and here again n stands for refractive index i stands for angle of incidence or incidence medium then here are some 
refractive indices of the different mediums. For vacuum, the index of refraction it is always 1.00. Then second medium, for example, suppose air and the value of refractive index or index of refraction it is 1.0003. Then remember for water the value of refractive index is 1.333. For ethanol the value of refractive index is 1.36. Then for crown glass the value of refractive index is 1.52. For diamond the value of refractive index is 2.42. Then all of you know if we have a mixture of two colorless liquids for example benzene and ethyl alcohol though benzene and ethyl alcohol these two liquids are colorless still we will see the difference between the first layer and second layer or in the another example suppose we have water and ccl4 here ccl4 carbon tetrachloride and we have taken ccl4 and water in a test tube we have stirred this test tube well and kept for some time again here though these two liquids are colorless in the test tube after some time we observe that the lower layer it is of ccl4 layer and upper layer it is of water and ccl4 and water they two are immiscible liquids and there is a clear cut boundary between these two immiscible liquids and this is due to the different refractive indices of water and ccl4 remember this is the most important property then something regarding the optical density and the speed of the light here the speed of light is dependent on properties of the medium and optical density determines how much energy is absorbed and re-emitted in a medium and determines the speed of light in that medium. I repeat once again the speed of light it depends on the properties of medium and optical density determines how much energy is absorbed or re-emitted in a medium and determines the speed of the light in that medium then the higher the optical density the lower the speed of light wave then index of refraction or refractive index is also a measure of medium's optical density here refractive index is a also measure of medium's optical density as the optical density increases the value of refractive index also increases in this case n represents that means refractive index represents how much slower the light travels in the medium as compared to the vacuum and the refractive index can be determined using this equation also here the refractive index of any material it is equal to the ratio of speed of light that means c divided by the velocity phi of the material and by using this equation also we can determine the refractive index of any material then the determination of refractive index by Abbe's refractometer it is based on 
the principle of critical angle here and in this slide it is represented how the critical angles are calculated remember i will repeat once again the determination of refractive index with the help of abes refractometer it is done with the help of critical angle principle and uh, after some time i will explain you what is the critical angle principle simply remember here how we can calculate the critical angle here the equation for calculating critical angle here sin theta c c stands for critical angle and it is the ratio of refractive index of refracted medium divided by the refractive index of incidence medium or n2 divided by n1 that means refractive index of the second medium divided by refractive index of the first medium this ratio gives the critical angle then here one simple example for you what is the critical angle for diamond what is the critical angle for diamond here this is the sin theta c that means critical angle of a diamond and it is the refractive index in air divided by refractive index of diamond and these two values are given you know the refractive index of air it is 1.0003 and the refractive index of diamond is 2.52 and by taking the ratio we will have this value 23.3 degrees and this is the critical angle of diamond very simple formula used here if we know the refractive index of two mediums then taking the simple ratio we will find the refractive index of any material or critical angle of any material then the atmospheric refraction here mirages that means floating images that appear in the distance and that is r that is the refraction of light in the earth's atmosphere you know on hot days a hot air is in contact with the ground with cooler air above it light travels faster in the hot air and this increase in speed causes a bending of the light rays and we appear we see the image appears upside down to the observer then the dispersion of light here dispersion of light it is nothing but the separation of light into its spectrum is called dispersion and all of you know the red light is a bent the least while violet light bent in the most and the refractive index depends on the color or frequency of the light and a very good example of dispersion of light it is the rainbow and here is the picture of a rainbow and this is the very good example of dispersion of light here this is a red light it bends very low while this is a violet light it bends more and this is the refraction of light then the next point here determination of refractive index by using a 
critical angle principle and the instrument used here in the determination of refractive index that instrument's name is abes refractometer abes it is a name of scientist you know refractive index n it is the ratio of sine of angle incidence divided by sine of angle refraction and the critical angle means when the angle of incidence i it becomes equal to 90 degree and when the sine of angle r that is refraction it reaches to its the maximum position we call that as r dash then all of you know sin 90 it is 1 and this angle of refraction it reaches at its a maximum position and after this if we increase the angle of incidence from 90 to 100 100 to 110 still the angle of refraction it does not increases so this condition of angle of incidence 90 equal to 1 and angle of refraction it reaches to its maximum position this condition is called as critical angle here r dash is called a critical angle and this phenomenon is known as critical angle phenomenon and the determination of refractive index by the Abbes refractometer it is based on this critical angle phenomenon remember that. then this is a ray diagram of the or optical diagram of Abbes refractometer in the laboratory we have this instrument and at the time of practical you will learn how to determine the refractive index time being a focus on the construction and working of the Abbes refractometer here Abbes refractometer it is shown in this figure and it consists of a here it is a mirror here it is a telescope here it is a prism box and here it is a adjustment knob then a thin film of a liquid is placed between two prisms and the surface of prism P is polished white while the surface of the prism Q is finely ground that means you have to take simply a liquid in between the two prisms here P and Q these are two prisms though this diagram is not clear you will clearly understand at the time of practical the prism box here remember that the surface of the prism P is polished one that means upper prism it has a polished surface and lower prism it has a finely ground surface and in between these two prisms you have to take at about 0.01 mm surface or a liquid layer under study from the source yes the light is fall on the prism box and by adjusting this adjustment knob you will see through telescope and you will see the upper half portion is dark one and the half another half portion is bright one and there is a clear cut separation line in between a circle which separates a bright half portion and dark half portion and this is the critical angle phenomena here the specific refraction or specific refractivity 
it is first shown or calculated by the scientist Lorenz and Lorenz in 1880 on the basis of electromagnetic theory of light derived the following relation for the refractive power of substances and the specific refraction it is a, a denoted by r s s stands for specific and it is equal to or it is mathematically given as n square minus 1 upon n square plus 2 into 1 by d where n it is the refractive index and d it is a density of the liquid then the molar refraction or molecular refractivity represented by letter rm and it is nothing but if we multiply the specific refraction r with the molecular weight of the liquid and the formula for molar refraction or molecular refraction rm it is equal to n square minus 1 upon n square plus 2 into m by d in short the molar refraction or molecular refraction it is nothing but the product of specific refractivity or specific refraction r into m by using this formula we can calculate either a specific refraction or molar refraction of the liquid by knowing its a molecular weight and density of the liquid and refractive index then this is the diagram which shows a critical angle principle here the refractive index of a liquid is measured on the basis of critical angle principle and you know as angle of i increases the angle of r also increases but to a certain limit and when angle of i is greater than 90 this ray suffers total internal reflection and when the angle of i it is less than 90 the ray here ray a and b we observe a light band here this is a c ray this is a b and here it is a a ray and these are the incident rays from the source here it is a first medium here it is a second medium these are the rays here it is a normal and this d ray d refracted ray it shows the angle of incidence is 90 degree and angle of refraction is at its maximum value and with the help of this principle we can determine the refractive index here simply when a beam of light passes from less dense that means rare medium to more dense medium it is refracted refracted means bented or changes the direction towards normal and this is called a refraction of light and it is first studied by the scientist snells and he formulated a snells law as refractive index n it is the ratio of angle of incidence divided by angle of refraction and here n is a refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium we have seen this so we will 
see next time the problems based on the refractive index specific refraction and molar refraction and the remaining part of this unit thank you